Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss the working principle of a buck regulator. Before I begin, let us see what is the definition of a voltage regulator. A voltage regulator is a device that maintains a constant DC output voltage irrespective of the changes in input voltage or load conditions. In a buck regulator, the average output voltage is less than the input voltage. In fact, the word buck means to oppose or resist or contradict. This means that the buck regulator opposes or resists the input voltage. Therefore, the average output voltage is lesser than the input voltage. In the circuit diagram shown here, we have a buck regulator that uses a BJT as the control switch and the diode as the uncontrolled switch. They operate as two single pole single through bidirectional switches. If you have watched my previous video on step down chopper, you would notice that this design is very similar to that of the step down chopper. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can click on the link shown in the top right corner right now. I will also leave the link of that video in the description below. The switching representation of the buck regulator is shown in the circuit shown here. Note that the BJT and diode are controlled to work as a bidirectional switch. This means that when one of them is on, the other must be in off state. The overall working principle can be divided into two modes. Let us see what happens in mode 1. Mode 1 begins when transistor Q1 is switched on at time t is equals to 0 for a overall duration of let us say t1 seconds. Note that the switch S1 is now connected to node 1 in the switching circuit shown here. Coming to the mode 1 circuit, you can see that the inductor now stores energy and the inductor current IL rises. This can be seen in the waveform shown here. This is the waveform for inductor current. This is the overall duration of mode 1 and as you can see, the inductor current linearly rises. Let the initial and final values of the inductor current in this mode be denoted as I1 and I2 respectively. Also note the variation in the supply current. Let us come back to mode 1 circuit. You will note that in mode 1 the supply and load are connected whereas the diode is turned off because it is reverse biased. Coming to the inductor current, we note that the inductor current flows through the filter capacitor C and the load resistor R. Let the capacitor current be denoted as IC and the load current as I0 which is anyhow equals to IA and I will explain why it is equals to IA a little later. Please note IA stands for the average value of the load current. We see that the inductor current IL is split in mode 1 across the capacitor and the load. Therefore, the minimum value of the capacitor current is equals to the minimum inductor current which is I1 minus IA and the maximum value of the capacitor current is equal to maximum value of inductor current which is I2 minus IA. This is shown in the waveforms here. Right, this is the waveform for the capacitor current. You will see that the minimum value is I1 minus IA and the maximum value is I2 minus IA. Further, as the capacitor current varies between positive and negative values, the capacitor voltage varies accordingly to create a sinusoidal waveform representation. However, please note the capacitor voltage is always maintained positive. Lastly, coming to the load current waveform which is the last waveform shown here. Since the regulator is designed to hold the output constant, quite obviously the load current is completely constant and is equal to the average output load current value. 
Coming to the first waveform here, this is the voltage across the diode. Let me come back to the circuit a little. Note that in mode 1, which is our current mode of discussion, the diode DM is turned off. So, the voltage across the terminals of the diode is equal to the supply voltage because the diode is currently turned off. If the diode were to be turned on, in an ideal scenario, the voltage across its terminals would be zero, which happens in mode 2, which we will discuss very soon. Coming to the waveforms, here we see that between 0 and T1, where T1 is equals to KT, the diode DM is turned off and the voltage across its terminals is equals to Vs. Let us now move on to mode 2. The circuit for the same is shown here. Mode 2 begins when the transistor Q1 is switched off at exactly time T is equals to T1. Now, the energy stored in the inductor forward biases the diode DM and the inductor current IL flows through L, C, load and diode DM. Note that the load current flows in the same direction in both mode 1 as well as in mode 2. Also, as the diode is now forward biased, the voltage across the diode DM is ideally zero and this is shown in the waveform here. Note, between KT and capital T is the time duration for mode 2. Since the diode is on in this period, the voltage between its terminals is ideally zero. Coming back to the mode 2 circuit, we now note that the inductor is now losing its energy and therefore the inductor current decreases. This can be seen in the waveform here. Note, at the beginning of mode 2, the inductor current is I2. And as mode 2 progresses, the inductor loses its energy and therefore the inductor current linearly drops. This will continue as long as the transistor is turned on again in the next cycle. Here, please note we have assumed that the transistor switch is turned on before the inductor current becomes zero. Coming to the supply current waveform for mode 2, we note that the supply is now disconnected from the load and is in an open circuit due to BJT being off. Therefore, the supply current is zero in this mode. Further, since the inductor is losing its energy, the capacitor current correspondingly decreases from I2 minus A to I1 minus A. Please note the variation of the capacitor voltage as the capacitor current crosses the zero line. Lastly, coming to the load current waveform, we have already noted that the load current continues to flow in the same direction as mode 1 and is still constant. Therefore, the load current at any instant is equal to its average value. The complete cycle repeats when the transistor is turned on in the next cycle which happens at time capital T which denotes the period of the switching operation. Lastly, before I conclude, I would like to talk a bit on the control block shown here. Note that a regulator is supposed to hold the output constant irrespective of the changes in the input voltage or load conditions. To make sure this happens, a control block is used as a feedback path to control the switching operation of the BJT. In case the input or load conditions vary, the change in the inductor current is measured and an error signal is fed to the control block. The control block then changes the switching times of the transistor accordingly to oppose the change in the inductor current. For example, if the inductor current increases due to either change in input or load, the control block will adjust the on time of the transistor so that the inductor current decreases. In a very similar fashion, if the inductor current decreases due to change in input or load conditions, then the control block increases the on time period of Q1 so that the inductor current increases. By doing this, the control block makes sure the output voltage as well as the output current are held to a fixed value. 
This in fact is what is the overall objective behind a regulator. Right, that is all about the working principle of a buck regulator. Please note the positions of the transistor switch and the diode because we are going to use the same elements for the boost as well as buck boost regulator which I will be discussing in my next videos. Also, I will be providing a detailed mathematical analysis of the buck regulator as well as the simulation of the same using the RCAD piece by simulation tool in one of my next videos. Right. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos on power electronics. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.